I saw a question the other day that I believe was getting at a freewheel design in FreeCAD, so I thought I'd take a shot at it. At first glance, it looks like an approach similar to the serrated locking joint might be appropriate. But because of the exact shape we need to cut out here, I actually think a different approach will work better. A good example of an application of this sort of design would be a mechanism for any sort of wind-up device. Essentially, this is going to be a tube split in such a way that the top part can freely slip over the bottom part in one direction, but will lock into place going the other direction. Start in the part workbench with a primitive tube. Give it an outer radius of 6 mm and an inner radius of 4 mm. Set the height to 5 mm. Now we want a smooth ramp or sawtooth like profile on top so that the matching upper portion of the shaft can easily slip over it. Go to Create Primitive and select Helix. Height 4 mm, radius 3.9 mm, and now for the pitch. A pitch of 4 mm will be one smooth ramp going all the way around the tube. But we want four ramps arranged in a polar pattern. So multiply by 4 and set the pitch to 16 to go one quarter of the way around. Now create a second helix, same parameters but with a radius of 6.1 mm. I'll rotate this around so you can see the helices. Select the first helix, the second helix, and create a ruled surface between them. This is the cutter for our ramp. But we need a solid base before the cut, so move it up a little bit. Select both helices, go to Placement, Position, Z, and set 1 mm. When moving the helices, the ruled surface will follow. Select the ruled surface and the draft polar array. Be sure to reset the center position since just moving the mouse cursor over to the dialog disturbed it. Set four elements and OK that. It may take a moment to think. If you want to, you can also use the lattice to polar array for this. And now we have the ruled surfaces to act as cutting edges. Select the array and extrude. It should go over the top. It doesn't matter how far, so just take the default of 10 millimeters. It complains that it can't find the normal vector. That's not too surprising. It's not usual to extrude solids from surfaces. Fortunately, it offers to set a custom direction. Click on the Z twice to get a positive Z direction and OK. That's better. While the top has an interesting shape as well, we're actually interested in the bottom. That's the part that's going to make our cutout. If I leave it like this, we're going to end up with sharp edges scraping over sharp edges every time the freewheel rotates. That would lead to premature wear and it would soon become ill-fitting. Select the fillet tool. Tell it which shape to apply the fillets to. I could also have just selected the extrude before pressing fillet. Now select each of the top sharp edges. A 1mm fillet will do just fine, so hit OK. Now make the tube visible again. Select it and select the fillet it extrude and cut. That's rounded the inside corners, but we also have the top to deal with. There's a reason I didn't fillet the inside corners on the cutting tool. Let me show you. Click Fillet, select one of the inside corners, and note how because of the extra edge, it wants to fill it in the wrong direction. There's no real point in fighting with that since I can just take it as it is and apply the fillet on the final cut part. So select the cut, the fillet tool, and once again select all of the sharp edges. Apply a one millimeter fillet to match the other part. Obviously something has gone wrong. Somehow the fillet geometry blew up. This is one of those remaining rough edges in FreeCAD. The developers have made remarkable strides in a short period of time, but there's a million little details, some of which are still in need of work, and this is one of them. It took me a few minutes to figure this out. Looking at the cut, you'll notice that one of the fillets occurs exactly on one of the internal edges of the shape. This edge is left over from the original tube, which I can show you here. Looking in the data pane, there's no option offered to refine the shape. 
so we're kind of stuck with this edge. The fillet is just not going to work while the edge is there. Then I realize that we don't have to get rid of the edge, we just have to move it so it's not in line with the fillet. Since this is a featureless tube other than the edge, rotation along the z-axis is not going to matter. So select the tube, and in the data pane placement.angle, set it to 15 degrees. That should be just enough to move it away from the fillet. As you can see, as soon as the edge is moved, the fillet suddenly applies correctly. You can see it more clearly when I hide the cut. This is the shape we want. A nice ramp, flat on one side, no sharp edges. Now for the top part of the shaft. Create another tube. Make sure the inner and outer radius are 4 and 6 millimeters respectively to match the bottom tube. Go with a height of 5 millimeters. Now since the cuts were offset 1 millimeter up on the lower shaft, offset the upper shaft by 1 millimeter as well. Go to Placement Position Z and set it to 1 millimeter. Select the second tube and the fillet and cut. This gives us an upper shaft matching the lower shaft. I can unhide the fillet to show you how they fit together. Note that just because the fillet is now inside the cut does not mean it can't be referred to elsewhere or exported in a step file. These two freewheel parts need to ride on a shaft in order to work. So create a cylinder and set its radius to 3.8 millimeters to allow a little clearance. If you're milling this in metal, a tighter clearance might be more appropriate. Might as well just keep the default height of 10 millimeters for now. In practice, the actual height would depend on the surrounding design that I won't be covering today. Just to show you how it all fits together, I'll lift the upper shaft a little bit. You can see as it rotates, the fillets will rub together and then it'll drop back down into the ramp. In the other direction, it won't rotate at all. In practical application, I could see an idler gear attached to the top shaft with a wind-up key attached to the driving gear in a mainspring mechanism as the driven gear. The idler could either be attached to the top of the freewheel with splines and let the freewheel slip inside it, or the entire idler gear could move with the freewheel and slip against the driving and driven gears. To keep the mechanism working, I would envision some sort of spring pressing against the top of the freewheel, something like this. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.